You can support this show at patreon.com slash ASA podcasting. Hey everyone, I had some upload time left on the feed for this month and uh, currently going through and rebuilding the first, uh, I don't know, two years of the <laughs> podcast that got lost on the old feed. Uh, so I'm going to post uh, as a post with some of the old episodes, uh, probably the first few um, since I have plenty of uh, time left and they were very short, so. Uh, if you want to listen to a few of those older ones, uh, that'll be here. They'll just be all connected together in one one file. No need to waste the upload time for sure. All right. Thanks for listening. Later. Welcome to a Skyrimatic podcast where I will discuss my adventures and misadventures through Skyrim. Join me. Add your stories, add your tales. Let's uh, let's get into this thing. All right, welcome everyone. This is the first episode of Skyrimatic podcast. Uh, so I'm Michael. Yes, I know Skyrim has been out for over a year and a half. Um, that's okay. I'm still playing it. <laughs> so, quickly, how I play it. I play on Xbox 360. I am on my only my third character, actually. I maxed out the first two. And um, this one, I, this time, my first one was an Ar- uh, I'm sorry, I was a Nord. Then I went Khajiit. Now I'm on an Argonian. But um, this is going to be a quick overview. And... Uh, basically, I just want to talk about the different quests and things like that as I do them. Um, I've done pretty much every quest, I think, but there's so many different ways to play it. And I just started over again, so I figured, you know what, it's a good time to do something like this. So if you want to join in, add your stories, add uh, some of the stuff you found or didn't find. Um, I don't have much ex- or any experience with the PC version, so... That would kind of be lost on me, but feel free to add that in, Yeah, any mods or anything like that. But I pretty much will stick to what I know and what I'm doing and where I'm going. Yeah, so this character I started was Argoni, and he's uh, about a level 10 right now. Um, I am now, I didn't go into the main storyline. I'm focusing on the Winterhold College storyline. Because that got corrupted in my last character, and I never got to finish it. I finished it on the first character, but that's been so long ago that uh, I really haven't. I don't remember a lot of. It. I remember it, but I, you know, it, it's like new to me because I it got screwed up on the last one, which was disappointing. And by the time I went back to it on that character, I was already like level seventy something, and I was trying to get up to max it out before they had the legendary thing. So. Yeah, so I'm going to go with the college first, go through all that. I've done some uh, different little quests here and there. I've got a couple of shouts already, but I don't actually, I can't use them because I, I haven't activated any kind of dragons yet. I haven't gotten that far in that part of the quest. Um, i trying to think of anything else. Is that, I'm, doing, I've, I'm pretty balanced so far, actually. Balancing it out. I think maxing out my last character helped me learn to balance things out earlier. <laughs> Rather than wait till the end and try and learn two hand it when you're like a level seventy five and it takes forever in three days to get to eighty one that took forever. God, that freaking takes forever to get to that last little bit, but anyway, so that's what I'm gonna be talking about. That's what I'm hopefully gonna be doing uh feel free to email at a skyrim a skyrim addict podcast at gmail dot com uh send you know voice memos, whatever emails. Tell me what you're doing, what I'm, you know, comment on what I'm doing or things I should try out. Um, I'm hoping to find some new stuff this time around because you always find something different, something new. So, all right, that's all I got for now. Um, I'll be back soon. See ya. All righty. So, uh, yeah, I'm still on the College of Winterhold quest. I'm uh, partway through it now. Just talk to the uh, Augur of Dunlane, I believe that's the name. So I'm, I'm about up to that part. But uh, yeah, I've been roaming around. I've been trying to do everything 
roaming wise and not fast travel. Although I do love the fast travel, but then you end up missing a lot of stuff. <laughs> and especially, especially when you've been playing it a while, you tend to fall into that fast travel trap. At least I do anyway. So I, I, I've been trying to run as much as possible. I ended up, um, was that up by Affland, the, the lift up there, um, by Wayward Pass. So I'm roaming up there, and then freaking two gargoyles show up, and I'm like, oh, and my guy is really not that powered yet. I'm still using Nord Bow. I don't have any dragon shouts yet because I still didn't start the dragon storyline, and I kind of really missed the shouts. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I missed the uh, force push and all that. Uh, I think I may have to start that storyline at some point. But I, I, I'm going to stick with finishing the Mage's Guild first and then do that. And I've been building up my sneak. I think I'm up to 50-some sneak. I just sneak everywhere. But I forgot how freaking hard the Falmer are when you're not very powerful. <laughs> some of them kicked my ass. I've been playing so long as a character that, you know, trying to max out my last character that... When I started over, I was like, holy shit. So, you know what? It's more. It's much more fun this way because you actually have to think about it. And uh, especially, you know, focusing on the archery, I got to kind of duck and weave and hide and and sneak around and stuff. But I've been, still been trying to balance everything out as best I can. I don't want something to lag too far behind and then, you know, be like a level 20 uh, two-handed and a level 80 archery or something like that. I'm trying to keep it relatively balanced, but... I really like archery. <laughs> I really like shooting shit from far away. So, yeah. So I'm going to continue on uh, College of Winter Hold. I should be finished that this week. I think I'm up to about a level twenty now, and I've been mostly putting my points into sneak uh, a little bit here and there and other stuff. Sneak and uh, archery, and encha uh, enchanting, of course. Going up the light side on the smithing tree, just because my guy's more of an archer and stuff. So. And I like the elven stuff. It's nice and light. So I need to go get some of that. I need to head out west and get some elven gear. Because uh, this Nord bow is just not doing it. Either that or I gotta go found, find the bound bow. Uh, I've been using a lot of Atronarch, flame Atronarchs to... Uh, or Atronachs, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> to keep people busy while I'm shooting. Uh, of course, I had the uh, the... Companion from um, Winter, uh, not what uh, White Run, sorry, and I killed her because <laughs> she stepped right in front of my arrow. So that uh, didn't go great. But uh, I've, I've, I think the toughest part for me has been I'm trying to think what where I really ran into the most trouble. Uh, it wasn't. There was a damn orc up at the Wayward Pass, too. That old orc. Oh, God, he was really freaking tough, too. Oh, the Charos, or whatever the hell they're called. God, they're fucking hard. I hate them. But fire, you know, I found the flame of Atriarch will get down, down pretty good, and then I can... I just need a much better bow. This bow really blows. Freaking... The ancient Nord bow or whatever is is not that strong. And I need to build up my enchanting a little bit. So I'm probably going to work on that. Work on some smithing. Work on some enchanting. Do some more roaming. Um, get a horse somewhere. Uh, I miss not having Shadowmir. Oh, and I ran into... I, I completed the... Well, not much of a quest where you slow, keep Cicero from uh, getting getting to bury his mother or whatever. And he's hanging out on the road there. Did that one. I do have a couple. I found a couple of the word walls. I just need to start getting some. Get into that story so I can start using the shouts. And I, I don't know. Next, I don't know. I'm going to mix it up. Maybe I won't even go into the dragon ones next. Maybe I'll go. Because you know what? I didn't finish the last time the, uh, the Forsworn storyline. Also uh, had an issue for me, and I couldn't finish it. So maybe I'll finish that one next. Although the Force Warner, or the Briar Hearts, will probably kick my ass pretty good. But that'll be good. That'll be fun. So maybe I'll go College of Winterhold into the uh, Force Warner storyline, and then to the Dragon one. 
I've never done it that way, so maybe I'll do that and then see how that works out. Because that that story also, or that quest also glitched out on me last time, and I couldn't finish it, which really sucked. <laughs> that was two big quests that that blew out on me, and I, I couldn't even play them. And I try when I was trying to max out that character. So yeah, maybe I'll get. Hopefully, I'll get some uh, smithing done, some enchanting done before I get over there. And yeah, uh, I'll obviously my magic will be a little better. Finishing up the college storyline, and that, I think that's where I'll head next. And then maybe to dragon head into the main quest storyline after that. But uh, yep, that's where I'm sitting at. Um, if you want to let me know uh, what you're doing or have any tips or anything like that, it's uh, a Skyrim podcast or a Skyrim addict podcast at gmail dot com. I wonder, there wasn't any weird glitches this time. Hmm. I don't really have any bounties going. I, I've you know gone through some dungeons and some ruins and stuff like that. But I think, yeah, maybe I'll go find that conjured bow. That That's always good. But I, I'm kind of liking being low-powered and being forced to do things a little bit of a different way. It's nice to have a, you know, a tank companion to kind of throw out there ahead of you. But unfortunately, I killed her, so that didn't work out so well. So maybe I'll go find another one to use. But I find the, I guess the Atronarchs work just as well. And they help you build up the magic. So I've been putting more of my my uh, level ups into the Magicka. Rather than, a little bit in the stamina, a little bit in the health. But mostly Magicka. That way I have enough to do stuff. And, you know... Um, Getting the novice part of the trees, yeah, uh, restoration, destruction, conjuration, just the novice ones, just to knock them down a little bit until I can get some enchanting going. But that's where I'm sitting at. It's been another show, and uh, take care. Bye. All right, uh, I'm Michael. I'm back. So since last time I finished the finally finished the Mages College. Absolutely one of my favorite quests. I uh, haven't been able to do it in like a year and a half because of uh, how I've been playing. And it glitched. my last character get glitched out. And then, like I said before, I only played two characters so far. Which, considering I've had it from the beginning, isn't a lot. But anyway, I uh, love Labyrinthian. Oh, I forgot how awesome that was with the skeleton dragon. And just, uh, that is a great, great dungeon. Oh. I was so happy to be able to do that again. So I completed that quest. Uh, I still cannot use the dragon shouts because I didn't bother, <laughs> didn't bother starting that yet. Um, I did pick up a companion along the way. I picked up Ilya, I believe her name is, from the uh, Darklight Tower, Nightwatch Tower, um, where you have to Dark Darklight Tower. Yeah, where you have to help her defeat her mother who's uh i don't know doing some conjuration or something so i grabbed her as a as a helper after i beat that on the way back to the college or something i came across that so yeah i picked her up brought her through labyrinthian took on the skeleton dragon i wasn't uh, i'm mostly doing archery still uh, i think at the time i did labyrinthian i was at like a level 23 overall and maybe like um 40 with archery maybe i don't think i was that quite that high but um <clears throat> the death lords were the Draugr death lords were just like kicking my ass royally <laughs> i they would i had to do some i enjoyed it because i had to do some serious sneaking and thinking to uh get through that part so that that was cool and when I went into the skeleton dragon part, I just snuck around and picked off each uh, those bunch of different skeletons and stuff in there. I picked them off one by one, and then kept hiding behind the columns and running around and hiding from the skeleton dragon. <laughs> and that seemed to work out. So I must not have had what? Oh, she got lost. Yeah, Ilya got lost. I, maybe it can't come. In. Maybe she can't come in with you. I don't know. Because of the way that storyline is, I'm not sure. So I ended up, went up, finished the Mage's College, 
And um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm kind of heading out towards um, Markarth. Because uh, I finally got some Elven gear. I like the Elven stuff. I, I like the light gear. And I've been working a little on smithing. I'm in, in like the mid-30s. I, I really want to get that up. i also been working on the uh, potions and things like that. Uh, why can't I think of the name of it? Whatever. <laughs> Alchemy. I've been working on that. Eating ingredients and mixing them together. I I mean, I could, having played through it before, I could easily just go online and, you know, use the wiki. But I, I still kind of like finding out what's what through trial and error. Plus, it helps build up uh, that skill. Uh, I've been kind of trying to do a little one-handed here and there, some sneaking, since I, I have the 15 times sneak thing now for with one-handed from behind. So I like using that with the daggers. That You can pretty much waste a lot of things that way and i'm starting to get better weapons now so <clears throat> my guy i think overall i think i'm at like a 26 right now and uh right now i just kind of headed back to white run to get, uh, offload some stuff sell some stuff and then i'm gonna head back out to explore out west towards mark and all i'm not sure what big quest i'm gonna do next uh I might just leave off the dragon for now and just keep going. I got the Dawn Guard invitation. Uh, I, I don't love that quest, that whole quest chain. It's a, I mean, it's okay. I enjoyed it when I did it, but um, I never did it and became a vampire lord. So, I mean, I guess I could always do that. I was a werewolf. I've been a were I was a Khajiit werewolf last time. <laughs> it's just freaking bizarre, but whatever. So that was fun. But uh yeah, I don't know. I I don't really use that werewolf part that much and I, I don't know if I'd use the vampire part that much. And it seems like it would be a complete pain in the fucking ass having to always feed and things like that. I I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. That's just not for me, I don't think. But um maybe I'll uh I don't know. Maybe I'll start to... I'll just wander and find stuff. Maybe I'll work my way up to Solitude and uh, see what's up there after I get down to Markarth. Or get on uh, that dude who's out in the ice. I forget what quest that is. <laughs> or maybe I can get it... Uh, I can head to the Thieves Guild. I can start that quest line. I, I enjoy that. That one's not bad either. So that's where I'm sitting. Uh, if you would like to add where you're at, what you're doing, if you're still playing the game, uh, even whatever version, like I said, I play on 360. And honestly, with the news that uh, ESO is not coming out till next, like spring, it sounds like, I'm probably going to stick with Skyrim for a while. I mean, obviously, I'll play some other games, but I'm probably going to stick with Skyrim for a while. And, and then I, I just hope that. God, it, I mean, with ESO coming out, I mean, are we looking at another three or four years before six comes out? Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. Don't even want to think about that. So I'll do some more exploring. I'll come back again, talk about it again. <laughs> so leave some feedback at a Skyrim Attic podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can send a voice, whatever, if you'd like. Run down what you're doing. Or if you're using a mod or whatever. Like I said, I play on 360, so no mods for me. And I, I play when I get the chance at this point. So, uh, oh, what did, oh, I did, uh, I did go through, what is that, Ranveig's Feast, I believe, you know, where the ghost, um, ghost, uh, explorers and adventurers are. And, I'm sorry, I don't want to attack you, but I have to attack you. Those guys. That's through there. That, that's not a bad little dungeon. There was nothing in the... I think... Oh, I did talk about that. I fell down the... Um, where you fall down the hole and you end up in the dungeon below. But I, I wasted that guy right away. So uh, that wasn't as challenging as I would have hoped it to have been. I need to wean myself off the bow a little bit because it's becoming a little too powered. So... I'm going to start focusing a little bit on the one-handed and things and maybe try to get, I just grabbed a glass 
uh, two-handed sword. So maybe I'll enchant that. I got to do some enchanting to build that up a little bit. I think I'm around maybe 35 in that. So just kind of trying to keep everything pretty balanced this time. Do it kind of that way. Although I, with the now with the legendary where you can max something out, I might uh, maybe I'll just keep going on the archery because I really love the archery. But that's all I got. So thanks for listening. I'll uh, talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Skyrimatic. You can find all of our contact information, YouTube channel information, as well as other shows over at asapodcasting.com, including our newest show, The Fallout Feed. Special thanks to Claire Lafar for the show's artwork. You can find her stuff at etsy.com slash myafireprints, M-A-I-A-F-I-R-E-P-R-I-N-T-S. And a thank you to Dan Bull for the use of his music in the roundtable open and close. You can find him on YouTube or iTunes. Just search Dan Bull. Once again, thanks for listening, and uh, later, everyone. All right, everyone. So I am still... I, well, I finally made it out to Mark Cars, and I remembered what uh, my plan was. I have decided to do the Forsworn quest, of course, because uh, that's what you do out there. And uh, yeah, so I finished that up um, on my way out. So I wandered from uh, Winter Hold area out to Markarth because I haven't been out there yet, so no fast traveling. Yeah, I stopped a few places along the way, of course. Um, right, started to run into the Forsworn. And uh, those Briar Hearts, damn it. <laughs> so I got uh got a, I did get a Briar Heart at that uh was a Bruca's Leap the readout there. So I went through there. I don't think I actually died in there. That w- that was surprising. Um Oh yeah is really strong, my the uh companion I have. She's really, really uh, too strong as a matter of fact, because uh I came upon uh I was just walking down the road and there's a Hag Raven and a Spriggan battling each other, which I have not come across yet so i had them because they had each other down pretty good <laughs> so i was about to finish them off and freaking Ilya like blizzards me and fucking blows me down the road and kills me i'm like oh jeez. so yeah i know we in this game we have issues with the companion stepping in front of our arrows and things like that well no i have problems with my helper being too goddamn strong and killing me uh, so that was, I, I was literally taking my last swing and I just got whacked by ice. I was like, get, oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. And of course I hadn't saved in a while. So I had to go, <laughs> I had been walking for quite a while. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. Uh, and I did the, uh, I ended up going through Harmog stall. I guess it is, um, where you go in the cave or I think it's like a fort, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, the adventurers there's like, oh, there's these uh, enchanted spiders. Oh, I got to get out of here. And that's that's a pretty easy one, though. That's pretty easy fort or dungeon or whatever you want to call it to go through. Now, I finally did get to do the Forsworn uh, storyline because the last character I had, that glitched out. So it was nice to actually do the whole entire story again. Um, it's not bad. I like the Forsworn one. Um, yeah, I did the whole part, what Edis or whatever his name is, and, um, back and forth and back and forth, talking to people, finding stuff, you know, searching the room, blah, blah, blah. I end up in the mine, Sid, uh, was it Sidna mine or whatever it is, and, um, you know, got in to Madonna, I got the shiv, I traded the shiv to get in, and then I started to escape with them decided i you know i'll go with them but then i got to the end of the tunnel right before we go into mark Hearth, and like as he was opening the door i was like ah you know what i'll kill him so i ended up killing him for <laughs> and i was like oh you know what is this gonna screw me up and i'm like not gonna be able to clear this quest <laughs> off the damn list now because i killed him at the very last second but now it did clear off so that was nice so and i got the uh whatever the gods uh gear of the gods or whatever they call it the Forsworn gear you get from him. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do next uh, after the Forsworn one. I have to I have to think about that. Maybe 
Maybe Thieves Guild, because I haven't really done any pickpocketing, so I'd like to do that. Not, I'm going to work some more on smithing. My guy's up to, I think I'm a 29 now overall. Sneak is really high, because I just sneak everywhere. Um, archery is around 50, 50 to 60 in that range, and one hand it's in the 40s. So I really need to get my enchanting up, because I want to be able to, not enchanting, I'm sorry, uh, my smithing up, because I want to be able to smith the enchanted items. So uh, I think you got to be level 50 or 60 for that. So i got a ways to go to get there. And I've been making potions here and there just to do it. Just to, As I build up ingredients, I just make some potions just to build up that skill. They come in handy, though. <laughs> when you're getting your butt beat, they do come in handy. Um, maybe I'll... Yeah, maybe I'll just wander over and do the thieves. I don't know. Maybe I'll start the dragon quest line since I haven't even touch that yet St i'm getting shout you know i'm getting the word walls but no shouts yet for me so i have to yeah, maybe i'll go back and look and see if there's any other quests that i started that i couldn't finish that i would like to do other than that i'm gonna keep building up uh i gotta work on my two-handed a little bit i haven't done that that, that kind of always falls off on me because i i like the shield and sword if i'm doing one-handed or the dagger if I'm sneaking. And I love the bow and arrow. And also I really like conjuring stuff because it's nice to have something help. <laughs> but, uh, yep, that's what I got this time. Um, I think I, yeah, I guess I'll just, um, maybe I'll do Thieves Guild next time. See what, just see what I end up doing. I don't know, maybe I'll just wander and go through a bunch of shit. Anyway, um, if you have anything you want to add, any stories of your own any uh, adventures you've done any stupid shit that's happened you can email me at a skyrimatic podcast at gmail.com uh you know voice text whatever i'll play it i wouldn't mind if this became something where people added their stories that would have that would be cool so however it works out and that's all i got goodbye Thanks for listening to this episode of Skyrimatic. You can find all of our contact information, YouTube channel information, as well as other shows over at asapodcasting.com, including our newest show, The Fallout Feed. Special thanks to Claire Lafar for the show's artwork. You can find her stuff at etsy.com slash myafireprints, M-A-I-A-F-I-R-E-P-R-I-N-T-S. And a thank you to Dan Bull for the use of his music in the roundtable opening close. You can find him on YouTube or iTunes. Just search Dan Bull. Once again, thanks for listening, and uh, later, everyone. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, so I'm back. Another episode. Did a little adventuring past couple weeks. Uh, didn't really get in any big quests right now. Um, I've just been kind of wandering, building up stuff still. I I can't. I did do the. Uh, Break Dawn quest and get the Dawnbreaker, which I, I've never really used that sword a lot. I need to start using that. I've never really uh, put that to any kind of good use. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just one of those weird things. Yeah, I found the uh, Merida's Beacon somewhere. I don't even remember. It was actually pretty early on when I first started playing the game, or first started playing this character. I found it, and then uh, I finally just made. I happened to be over that way, so I went and did that quest. I really like that. Uh, you know, I like directing the light through. That, that's a fun little, fun little uh, quest. And at the end, um, actually, it went way quicker at the end than the first time I did it back in the day, or the first couple times I did it, I should say. When you run into Malkarin in uh, at the end of the like the catacombs there or whatever it is, I ended up uh, pretty much getting them in two shots real quickly, which doesn't usually happen. Uh, but I'm, uh, I was using, I think, an ebony bow, but it only had soul trap on it. Didn't really have anything else on it. But I've switched over to the elven because that's my, I'm rocking the elven stuff right now. Uh, I've been trying to work on some smithing. I think I'm up to low 40s on that. So I'm trying to get to 60 so I can smith the damn enchanted items. But, um, Right now, I've been working on that and enchanting. Uh, I've kind of picked up. And also, I like uh, add a little bit to alchemy also because I like uh, getting some decent potions for, you know, improving things and things like that. So I've been doing that. Uh, I also came across uh, Fort Ragstead, 
which is a uh, just a you know little fort prison. Uh, it's part. It's in the um, Civil War quest when you join either the Legion or the Stormcloaks. Uh, either take it for the Stormcloaks or prove yourself worthy and take it back. I think from for the Legion, but um, I just kind of went in there and got you know pick that apart nothing really too eventful there um oh what oh i ended up uh doing the uh, what, man who cried wolf quest the where you go to wolf skull cave and they're um they're trying to oh what's her name they're they're trying to uh reawaken the wolf queen oh potema that's it okay they're trying to reawaken Potama, so you got to go through. I like that. It's a nice uh, sneaking quest for me. I, I like sneaking around, whacking out the droggers and conjurers that are floating around. And you can take some really long shots because if you're up on that peak as you come first come into the main cave, and when you come into the main cave and uh, you see them up there, and they, you know the lights all around, and they're um, trying to get her, get her back. Well, that's uh. From there, you can shoot straight down and and pop the one dragger and the uh, dragger, whatever, <laughs> and the the enchanter, whoever the fuck, what is he, conjurer? I don't know, whatever the fuck he is, he's walking around with him. You can pop. I like taking those real long shots like that. That's awesome because when you get them, it's like, oh, cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I finished that one up, so I'm waiting for the next part of that to come up. That'll be cool when the wolf queen's awakened. So. Uh, what else did I hit? Oh, I ran across the trader's post, which ended up being a pain in the ass for me. Um, it's just a little abandoned, like, shack, rundown shack over by Windhelm. Um, you know, kind of, kind of between Windhelm and, uh, Boethia. You know, the, uh, where the Boethia cult is. <laughs> and... But next door, there's freaking, like, three trolls. So, uh, the guy, the main guy kept, I guess, it was, I don't know if he was a bandit chief or what he was. But anyway, he kept disappearing around the freaking back of the house. And then I couldn't find him. And then the trolls would come and kill me. And if the trolls didn't kill me, my follower would kill me, as usual. But uh, I ended up getting through there. But then I realized there was an upper level I forgot about. So, I'm going to have to go back there and get the stuff out of there. I'm thinking I might just start the dragon quest, but it's it's interesting playing the game without dragons in it at all. I'm I'm trying I'm thinking about do, starting the uh, dawn guard quest and seeing if I have to go if I'll actually run into dragons without starting the dragon quest. You know where the two dragons are coming through the ice and all that. I assume they'll still be there, but uh, it's de- it's definitely different doing it that way. Uh, and then I hit up uh, Raven Scar Hollow, where you go in there. It's just a cave, but there's three Hag Ravens in there. So I get the one in the first room, and then I, I th- is there a door? I forget if there's a door or not. But anyway, I think there's a secret passage or something. Yeah, one of those rocks slide down, and I look into the other room, and they are fighting with the dude in the cage. So I wait until they're weakened. I kill them off. And I go in, and I forget the guy's a bandit, and I open the door, and he, like, I turn around, and he he whacks me. (laughs) I was like, what an idiot. I can't believe I did that. So the next time, I obviously shot him in the cage. But he's relatively strong for a guy with no armor or anything. But the Hag Ravens always have good stuff, so they always have lots of uh, stuff for alchemy. So I like like getting them. Yeah, so I'm not sure... <clears throat> if I, I should start to... I'm really... It's like a different game without the dragons in it because you're not looking around, well, obviously, for dragons all the time. But I, I like it. It's pretty cool. You can... You don't have the shouts, so I'm not... I used to use those a lot, especially the force one or the slow time. I used to use those a ton. So I feel like I'm playing a different game when I'm not using those. So I'm kind of having fun doing this way. So maybe I'll save that until, like, the very, very end, and I'll do... um Maybe the Dawn Guard or Companions or something like that next. I'm, I'm going to go through full quests this time instead of... Because uh, I think that's what happened to my last character, why they kept glitching out. I didn't 
Like I would start a quest and bounce onto another one and bounce back to another one and things would happen and then the quest would stop working. So I, I think I'll just, if I get a quest, I'll go through it and finish it off. I have a lot of those side quests I got to do right now. I think my guy's a uh, 34 and sneaks way up there because I sneak everywhere. Alchemy, I think I'm in the 30s. Um, enchanting, I think I'm in the 50s, closing in on 60. Uh, smithing, I'm in the uh, mid 40s. I, I want to get that up a little bit so I can obviously uh, do the enchanted thing, you know, smith enchanted items. And those are like the main things. My archeries, I think, in the 50s. Because I use that a lot. I've been going and using a lot of one-handed too. Um, just to build that up. And every once in a while I'll break out a two-handed sword and use that. Uh, use some destruction here and there. But honestly, my... I got... You know what? I need to probably get rid of the follower because she's so strong. That it's probably holding me back some. But I... Sometimes I'll just heal her while she's beating up stuff. But... She's she's like the strongest <laughs> follower I have ever had. I definitely recommend Ilya. And give her some, like, if you pick up some ice staffs or something like that, give them to her, and she will do some serious damage. And I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll hopefully get the enchanting up. But, yeah, maybe I'll start one of the new other bigger quests. We'll see. But that's all I got for now. Um, if you want to obviously add anything you're doing or whatever, Skyrim Attic Podcast at gmail.com. Um, I haven't had a chance to play a lot recently, so I don't have as many. I need to get into the bigger quests. I only have a few minutes at a time to play here and there. So hopefully I'll get a little more time over the next few weeks. But that's all I got. I'll talk to everybody later. Thanks for listening to this episode of Skyrim Addict. You can find all of our contact information, YouTube channel information, as well as other shows over at asapodcasting.com, including our newest show, The Fallout Feed. Special thanks to Claire Lafar for the show's artwork. You can find her stuff at etsy.com slash myafireprints, M-A-I-A-F-I-R-E-P-R-I-N-T-S. And a thank you to Dan Bull for the use of his music in the roundtable open and close. You can find him on YouTube or iTunes. Just search Dan Bull. Once again, thanks for listening, and uh, later, everyone. Hello, everyone. All right. I did a... I ended up uh, at Tolvald, Tuvald's, uh cave the other day, which is awesome, but I'll get into that in a little bit. I uh, ended up getting some feedback from Josh. Thank you very much. I'm going to read that now because there's some things I want to talk about with that. So Josh says, hey, just came across your podcast yesterday while I was looking for new things to listen to while I'm playing new things to listen to. <laughs> I need to learn how to read punctuation, apparently. <laughs> I'm still playing Skyrim as well with the first and only character I've ever made. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Just started the Dragonborn quest line, and it's tough. The main quest is done, and I've done the Mage College and Companions along with a ton of Daedric quests. No theme to this character, really. Just sort of do whatever quests come along. Just want to tell you, you maybe want to start up a new character and work through some of the quests without doing the main quest and getting the shout powers. Yeah, that's uh, that's one thing I noticed this week. Thanks again for the email. I appreciate that tons, actually. Um for me, I, this week while I was playing, I'm like, you know, it's really nice wandering around and not getting into a dragon fight every three seconds. Because after a while, they do they they kind of become t <laughs> tedious after you get, you know, after you have 70 dragon souls or whatever the hell, you know, some ridiculous amount. They do become a bit tedious. You're trying to go from place to place, and it's, oh, a dragon fight. Okay, let's stop and do this for 10 minutes, and then get back on the way i find it more fun wandering now whereas i used more fast travel um uh, when i was uh when i you know in my previous two characters with the dragons involved just because i'm like all right really do i want to get stuck on the road about and then you know as you get as time goes by and you level up it's like all right here comes two dragons uh, you know so uh, I re it really helps me explore and wander. 
you know, obviously bears pop up, vampires pop up. Um, but the dragon fights take a while and they just, they, and when you get more powered up, yeah, you know, when you level up enough, they just become a boring fight after a while. So I, I'm really, really enjoying it this way. And, uh, like I said, it helped with my exploring and that's how I ended up at Toll Vaults, um, so I ended up at Shorestone, which I haven't been to in a long time, I realized, when I was there. I was like, God, I haven't... Phew. It had been quite a while. And uh, so I started, I started headed off to Riften from there, and then I ended up at um, wandering into Tovalt's Cave. And when you first go in, you're like, oh, it's just a little bear cave. But uh, it has the three parts to it. and uh, Well, actually, at the beginning, I, I don't know if they're always bears or if they level up. Um, depending on, you know, where you're at. I think right now I'm a level 35 overall. And I think my highest thing is enchanting or sneak. Enchanting, I'm like 70. Sneak, I'm in the, maybe in the 80s because I sneak everywhere. And uh, <clears throat> archery, I'm in 40s, one-handed, 30s. Actually, two-handed, I'm close to 30 also. And smithing, God, it's so hard to. <laughs> you you got to get stuff to to really do some smithing. I got to get some iron ore so I can make it into gold, and that that jumps you up pretty good. If you have some gems and some gold, and you can make some jewelry, that really boosts up the uh, alchemy quickly. Or not alchemy, Jesus, the smithing. I've also been working on the, the alchemy. I do that every like every so often when uh, when I get too much to carry. When I'm at that point, when I've picked up too much crap. That's when I go, I'll make a bunch of potions, sell them off, whatever. Yeah, because when you're early on making the potions, they have a bunch of effects you don't want in them because you can't separate them out, and blah, blah, blah. You know, so I'll have like a restore health that poisons you or something like that. So, but I'd like to do that so that way, because obviously the more expensive the potion, the more it bumps you up um, experience wise. So, but anyway, Tolvald's, that, uh, I really love Tolvald's cave. That was uh, one of my favorite caves. I, I didn't, because the font, it's dark in there. There's a lot of waterfalls and stuff, so you can't necessarily see the Falmer and the, uh, what are they, Charis Hunters. So the first part, and I have my companion still. But she was kind of useless because she stopped following me halfway through the cave and just sat on a table, which I don't know why. And it was a hard, and it was a part that took me forever to beat. The first part was three bears. Uh, yeah, you kind of went through there quickly. That wasn't that big a deal. And then you get to the room with the chest. I'm like, oh, cool. And without thinking of it, you know, I open the chest and, you know, the arrows come shooting out of the walls, whatever. That's not a big deal. But, um, these two doors release and here comes four Falmer and I'm like, Oh shit. And they beat the hell out of me. So I was like, all right, let me, uh, next time I went in, I snuck around and I ended up finding the pull chains that opened the doors and <clears throat> went and got the Falmer before they were able to get out and get me. So, and I'm using Elven bow now with the soul trap on it because that, yeah. You know, you got to have the soul trap. The only problem is with the, having the soul trap on it because it can't have two enchantments right now is, you know, it doesn't do any extra damage, but I like having the soul trap. Yeah. I've never been big on using the spell, the soul trap spell. I've always just, um, put it on a weapon. I found that much easier, but maybe I should have a second bow. I'll have to find a second elven bow that has, damage on it and then i'll switch but <laughs> that's a big pain yeah so anyway i snuck up each side and killed the falmer that were in there and uh got looted the chest there's pretty good stuff in the chest and then continued on to um what's that next part called um tolvad's crossing tolvad's crossing and that's where you come in and it's like a bunch of levels and a waterfall and stuff and I like that because it's pretty cool. You can you can sit on the other side if you don't have a companion who's going to shoot magic all over the place and alert all the farmer that you're there. You can sit up there and kind of pick them off and practice some bow skills. 
course, if you have a companion who's going to shoot magic everywhere and have the friggin' Falmer find you and come running across and get you, then it's not going to be as sneaky. So <laughs> that's kind of what happened. So anyway, I got through that part where you, all the different – I love it because there's so many different levels, so many crevices. It's dark in there. It's hard to see. Uh, then you get into this big, like, Dwemer ro- room where there's some gears and stuff. And I think it's called The Crossing, maybe? Something like that. Tolvald's Crossing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I missed some stuff. I need to, uh, I need to go back. I think I missed a, uh, Baron Zaya stone in there. Anyway, I'll have to go back and do that. You know, you see there's a couple dead guys and skeletons along the way with journals. You read that kind of stuff. Um, I think I must have missed the Baron's Eyes to one of those. As I'm, I'm reading the wiki as a, right now just to refresh my memory. I played, I finished playing it last night, um, but I, I just wanted to refresh on some of the names. But anyway, <laughs> you get to this say one point after you know you battle some Falmer and you go up this trail to the top. It's kind of like a cylindrical cave. So anyway, you get to the top and there's this other room where there's two Charis Hunters and three Falmer, I think. So you got the net one nest on the right that has nothing in it, and the one on the left has one of the Hunters in it. So I was able to get that pretty easily, but I was having a bitch of a time getting the ones across. There's like a pathway and a fountain in the middle, kind of, and then two, a pathway to one of their little huts and then another pathway to like a little area they were sitting in. And I was just having a hell of a time getting them. So I ended up, and my f- companion wasn't following me, so what I would do is I would sneak, there was a hut over by where the first hunter was on the left, I would shoot an arrow, whack, you know, hit something, hide, they would all come across, they would all go back, and I'd hit something, but eventually they would find me, and uh, so I was like, ah, oh, screw it, so they found me, so I took off and ran back to the room where my companion was. And by then, there was only the one Falmer. Maybe it was like a Gloom Lurker or something like that following me and the Charis Hunter. So I bowled it back to that cave, back part of the cave and basically hid behind my companion and shot arrows from there. <laughs> so that was how I ended up getting through there. But I really enjoyed Toll Vaults. And um, after that, I did some, I just did some smithing and some alchemy and things like that and got rid of some stuff I had. Because I had built up built up a lot of stuff because I had gone through a couple caves. Um, there was maybe one or two other places I went, but uh, let me see. Let me look at my notes real quick. Yeah, oh, I did the Red Belly Mine in Shorestone, which was um, just the spiders over on the mine. Uh, that's pretty simple. It's good, to, uh, you know, good for archery and for getting some soul gems filled, some lower level soul gems filled. So I did that. I got a bunch of those. So I just enchant stuff and sell it just to build up the enchanting. It's getting a little better. Um, I headed down to Riften, and there was a vampire attack. <laughs> I may start the Thieves Guild storyline. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not in Riften anymore. I headed back to uh, White Run. I tend to go to White Run as a home base, even though I, you know what, I totally forgot. I have the, um, you know, I'm the head mate, whatever. Why can't I remember that? Head of the Majors College, whatever the hell he's called. <laughs> I'm the head mage at the Majors College. I should have just went there because I have all the stuff there. But they don't have a like any kind of smithing stuff. They have the enchanting and see. I go to White Run because I can, I can smith right at the place there on the right. I can go up to Dragon's Reach and use the enchanting. And then there's a bunch of stores there that I can use. So I tend to go to White Run because I know where all the stores are and it's simple. And Riften, you got kind of some shops down, some shops up. But And right now I'm looking for a goddamn wood axe. I can't find an axe. I want to make some arrows and I can't find a freaking axe. Because <laughs> I figured out it's way cheaper to make the arrows than it is to buy them. So I, I need to find a wood axe somewhere. And every every place I've gone to to buy one, they don't have one. And sometimes you find them laying around. But now, of course, I want one. I can't find one laying the hell around. 
Uh, and every time I go to Dragon's Reach, you know, the uh, mage in there is asking me, oh, did you head off to do the uh, Dragonstone quest yet? Or blah, blah, blah. What are you doing back here? Didn't you go yet? No, I'm not going. All right, I'm not going to do it. I, maybe I'll go do Dawn Guard only because I really, like I said, I really wanted to see if the dragons will be in it without starting the dragon quest. Will there be two dragons in the lake th- coming through the ice? I don't know. Oh, sorry if I spoiled anyone. <laughs> if you haven't played Dawn Guard yet, <laughs> don't listen to what I just said. <laughs> well, I guess technically I spoiled it. It has been out a long time, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm really enjoying just wandering. I, you know, I grab alchemic ingredients anywhere I can. Um, I just like doing it that way. I have fun doing it that way. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get to play much this week. I'm heading out to Comic-Con. So I probably won't get to play much this week. So maybe the week after. Maybe I'll, hopefully I'll get to play some before I go. And I'll have to see. I wonder if there's any kind of ESO events going on out there. If there is, maybe I'll go check those out. Or I made, I'm sure they'll have the food truck there or whatever. I'll get my fix that way. But, oh, my God. So I was at work this week. Um, this is Skyrim related in a way. And where I work, there are fields, you know, like uh, just normal fields, not like farm fields. You know, wildflowers, things like that. And as I drive, <laughs> so as I'm like either driving through or around or by the fields, I'm like, oh, there's like some thistle. There's uh, some tundra cotton. <laughs> That's how like I see the things in the field. I, I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. I have a problem. Uh, which I guess uh, is why the title is what it is. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, Josh, thank you for your email. I truly appreciate it. Uh, you can reach me at a Skyrim Addict, addict Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to email in what you're doing or you know, what you think about doing, how you play, anything like that. That would be awesome. Audio, text, whatever. I can play it either way. And, um, yeah, I think that's all I have. Oh, what the, oh, the one thing that, uh, yeah, actually Josh brought up in his email that I wanted to mention was I've never actually played, like, I've never planned out a character and played it like that. You know, like some people do, like, all right, my guy is this, 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 like set up a, sto- a backstory for him. I've never done that. You know, I kind of just play as I play. I don't know if that leads me to play the same way all the time, <laughs> but uh, I, it's harder for me to do that because I don't know exactly when I'm going to play and stuff like that. And sometimes my my son's playing with me and, and he's younger, so, you know, he'll just take over the controls for a while and do whatever he wants. And So I've never really played that way. I'd be interested to try that, though. I, I, I have to consider that for a for a next character. I think I want to play every race. And I haven't done that. I've I've only done three. I've done a Khajiit, a Nord, and uh, right now the Argonian. So I've never played as an elf, as any of the elves or anything, or as a red guard. So, or an orc, for that matter. So I, I may do that for like a next character. But I'm going to play this one for a while because I'm really enjoying playing it in, in this style without going into the main quest so all right that's where i'm at skyrim pod skyrimatic podcast gmail.com and i'll talk to everybody later bye hey what's up everyone i am back from uh san diego comic-con a little worse for the wear but uh yeah so some of the stuff uh i took notes about i played before i left so i may be a little rusty remembering it but uh Actually, today I just uh, <clears throat> I hopped in and uh, was going from solitude to, I don't know, somewhere. I ended up at uh, Liar's Retreat, which was a freaking awesome cave. Oh, love it. So you go in, and uh, I'm sure most of you have been there. And uh, you think it's just like this little bandit hall that kind of got run over by some farmer. And right now my guys are like a level 40, but um, my archery is pretty high. It's uh, closing in on 70, I believe. 
but um, I don't have any enchant- enchantments for the archery, so I I just run what I what, what I have. So I'm using the Elven Bow, which is like has like seventy has like uh, seventy hit points to it and um, seventy points of damage to it, and uh, you know whatever arrows I have, with blast, you know whatever ebony. I'm still looking for a freaking wood axe. I feel like I used to see wood axes everywhere, and now I can't find one. Now that I want to make some damn arrows, I don't know. I gotta find one because I want to make some arrows. That's, that's my whole goal. I've I've never actually made arrows in the game, so I'm, I would like to do that because they're kind of expensive if you keep buying that shit. So anyway, I go into Liar's Retreat, and uh, you know I I can't one shot things at this point. I can one shot some things, but um, not everything. I'm carrying two bows. One has uh, the soul trap on it. And the other has the fire, like 20 points of fire on it. So in this beginning part, I use the fire because I can't really one-shot things. I need to knock things. I can one-shot some of the Falmer, but not all of them. Yeah, it depends on which ones. And I think there's like six in this beginning part. And you're pretty much exposed. I mean, they're right down there on the floor. And you can cut, like, what I ended up doing was um, I was able to pick off one or two of them. And I think then I just ran and I picked off like two of them that were not real hard. And I ended up sneaking into the back room after uh, they were coming up to get me. I ran and then started sneaking and and hid for a little bit and uh, became hidden again. Uh, And then I was able to pick off some from behind, single shots, double shots, whatever it was, uh, and got out of that part of it. Then... um, when you're there's like a side room, a side hallway that loops around the main uh, area of that cave or bar or whatever the hell it is, and uh, you hear a guy talking, and I'm and then I remember this part. I'm like, oh yeah, this fucker. Last time I opened this door, he beat the hell out of me. It took me a few tries to actually get through the front part, you know. And then uh, this dude took me like twice because I forgot the first time and I opened the door and. When you open that door, a bunch of crap goes flying at him, and he knows you're there, like, right away. So, <laughs> I ended up getting him. I actually ended up battling him, like, four or five different times, because later on in Liar's Retreat, I got killed and forgot to save and had to go all the way back here. So, anyway, <laughs> I battled him a few times. Uh, mostly, I beat him with um, destruction magic. I would throw, like, a rune at the door, then open the door, then he'd run out. Uh, then I'd go hide, <clears throat> or I would throw, um, or I would conjure a flame matronarch and go hide, let him battle it once or twice, and then finish him off. Um, I have a health absorbing sword, a glass sword. So that one's not too bad. It absorbs like 16, 18 points of health. So, yeah, I use that some too. So I was kind of trying to mix, I was mixing it up a bit in here. Then there's a little side entrance to a cave. You know, a typical Falmer cave. You know, glowing mushrooms, some uh, frostbite spiders. I, I went through there. I was able to pick them off actually pretty easily with the soul enchant bow. And get some, uh, you know, fill up some of my soul gems. Then you get towards the end. You get to this one part, and I hear this Falmer is doing something. And there's these two, um, I don't know if they're quite cages. But, you know, there's Falmer cages where they keep the choros or whatever the fuck they're called. Uh, the choros. So he was standing outside one of them, and I was like, and I kind of remembered this part. There was a couple bandits in there. So I picked those three off, the Falmer, the two bandits. Um, and then the final room was a Charis Hunter and a couple more Falmer. So, yeah, I wasn't able to quite get them from afar. So I shot them a couple times and whipped out the sword and, and battled that way. And that's where I found the long hammer, which is, uh, I think you can swing faster. Is what it, when I looked it up, it swings faster as a two-handed hammer. So I don't really use uh, two-handed very much, but um, maybe I'll use that since I got it in my possession. I'm starting to get up to the breaking point with weight, so I'm gonna have to go offload somewhere again. Whoops, that was a really loud car driving by. Sorry about that. Anyway, gotta go offload soon. Uh, after going through that cave, I got. I got a bunch of stuff. Actually, I just offloaded a bunch of crap up at uh, 
I've been using uh, the Archmage's quarters because, well, I'm the Archmage, and I don't have a house since I'm not doing... I don't know if I can get a house if I'm not doing Dragon Quest. Can I become Thane if I'm not... I think... Maybe I can. I'm not sure. That's a, that's a good question I'm asking myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah, kind of before I went away, I did some other stuff. I did... Um, what was the one? Oh, I did a Pine Moon Cave, which was just a a little, you know, kind of like a vampire church. I did that. Um, I did the... That one wasn't real tough. You know, you go into the one church area. There's a... I think there's a vamp, like, standing up top on a walking path and down below and like the church pews and then one up at the the masters up at the uh vestibule or whatever the hell that thing's called there giving a little speech i guess is what's going on so that one wasn't too bad i was able to pick them off pretty easily so uh i hit up the highgate ruins up by uh up by uh dawn star <coughs> and um that's where i ended up uh you go in there and Anska, I think her name is. Uh, she's like an adventurer. She's in the first room. And she's looking for a scroll. And at the end is uh, Vlokan. And you get one of the priest masks and you get a shout in the way. So I have another shout that I'm not going to use. But, yeah, a lot of Draugr in this one. Uh, you have to... Oh, this is the one. I do like this, the, the little puzzle where, you know... It, it's in the book where it's like, um, it's one of those whale, fox, snake ones. Uh, there's four of them, though. But it's uh, the first one, fear, like, the first one fears the second or something like that. The first one fears none. The second one fears all. I forget exactly what it was. But, um, yeah, I do like that. I like, even though I basically remembered it, and it, it's relatively easy to figure out, I like that better than, you know, remember the pattern of the whale, snake, fox thing, and then put it in. I uh, you know I like a little riddle. I wouldn't mind more of that. So <clears throat> yeah, I hit there, and then I also trying to think. Uh, Lost Echo Cave, which was a uh, a big uh, Falmer Chorus cave. Um, trying to remember the basics of this one. I'm kind of looking it up as I go along since it's been. Uh, over a week since I, I played that part. Um, <clears throat> mm, yeah. No, there's nothing uh, really stand out about this one after looking up. Oh, I did do... Um, sh- did I talk about that last time? Or I did... Deepwood Redoubt. That's what I did. That's the one I was trying to think of. Where you go into the redoubt and then you go into the big open area, the Deepwood Vale... Which, uh, this is a Forsworn area. Oh, I l- another great area. The Deepwood Vale I love. Because I try and when you first get into the Vale, after you go through the, uh, like, come through, like, a cave entrance, it opens up real big. And you can, uh, I, I generally sneak around and try and pick them off, pick the, uh, Forsworn off from as far as I can. <laughs> sort of, like, little specks. Those, they are, oh. They see you from, like, everywhere. But anyway, I snuck off to the left, and there's a tower there. So I picked off the one there, and I was able to pick off a few more on the way. And then um, with the Briarheart, I kind of ran around a lot <laughs> and battled them that way. But, uh, yeah, Deepwood Vale I really love. And then you head up into the um, Hag's End, and there's a couple Hags in there and stuff like that. So I don't remember if there was a shout in there. Is there a word wall in Hag's End? I don't, I don't think so. I'm not sure. But there's a cut. That's the one where you go in, and the Hag's in the first room. And there's a couple witches at the table, and then as you, sh- you know, as you harm the Hag, it disappears and goes into the next room, and you kind of follow it along. Um, that's uh, that's that one where yeah, I think you have to. It's like three or four different times you have to battle it. Yeah, you, know, you kind of hit it once, and or is when you do a certain amount of damage to it, that's when it uh, moves on. Oh, and there is a word wall in there, so I have another one which I'm never going to use. Yeah, I've decided I'm I'm probably not going to do the dragon storyline with this character. So 
because I'm already up to 40. Um, I just got the, was able to do the smithing, arcane smithing. And once you kind of get to that point, you can, and my enchantments are pretty good now. And now that I have, I do have an archery enchant now, although I'm not sure if I'm going to use it because I, I don't know if I want to overpower because overpowering kind of gets boring. You know, you can kind of one shot everything. That is fun, but it kind of it's it's not as yeah. You know, <laughs> it's fun and it's not fun. If you're just sneaking through one shotting everything, it kind of gets old. So I I like being having to take my time and getting killed and having to redo things and rethink through things. So, oh, which reminded me actually, I was thinking about this. How I played the I did play the game one other way, which was I never added any perks i played up to like a level 55 and i would up like my magicka or up my health or up my stamina but i never did any of the perks so i just left the perks sitting there so i had like 55 perks and that was pretty fun it kept lower powered for a longer amount of time like you you know you would get more health more and you know you would be stronger obviously but like you you wouldn't have any crazy like 170 damage bows or, you know, things like that. Like one shot of mammoth or one shot of dragon or whatever, you know, anything like that. So that was pretty fun playing it that way. I played, I mean, obviously I played up to level 55. So I played a pretty long time with that guy. So that I enjoyed that. So I think this one, I'm just going to ease back on the enchantments so I, I don't become too crazy overpowered. Maybe I'll concentrate on more like health and armor enchantments and, uh, you know, frost resistance, things like that, instead of boosting up my archery so it doesn't become too damn strong. So that's uh, that's kind of where I'm sitting now. Oh, I did uh, Volkskig or whatever it is, and I got the other Volksung mask. So I did that also. Um, I believe that's a big Draugr area. And I hit up uh, Rhyme Rock Barrow, which is just a small place where um, there's just a conjurer and Atronarch. So I had a couple of different places. Uh, Liar's Retreat was the freshest one in my mind since I just did that. And then Deep Wood Redoubt because I really like that one. I've done that one a bunch of times. That's one of, one of my favorite areas too because of the Forsworn are tough. And there's a bunch of them in there that you can pick off at distances. And the Briar Heart's always a good fight if you're not like overpowered or anything. So I, I really dug that. And I think right now I just headed out to uh Cathwarson or whatever the hell it is. I just ended up there with the the battle over the mine and I gotta convince one or the other to leave, either just the hired hand or the people who own the mine. So I I'm gonna keep uh just going to keep wandering. Um, I have a little bit more I can get uh, before I get too heavy. So I'm going to get kind of maxed out or right before I max out. That way I can still fast travel and get rid of stuff. I tend to just go to White Run to get rid of everything. Um, except for, like, I'll build up a bunch of ingredients and I'll head up to the uh, college and dump stuff there. I have a barrel. I keep it in by the thing up there. But I do my smithing in uh, White Run. Actually, I do a lot of my enchanting there too, because I just go up to Dragon's Reach and do it there. Since the uh, you know, I can use the forge, and I don't know why I always use the forge all the way at the beginning of town instead of using the one at the Companions, and then just going over to Dragon's. Ooh, just going over to Dragon's Reach. Sorry, I had a little burp there. <laughs> but I, why don't I just use the one at the Companions? It's right there. It's a lot faster. <laughs> But you get two people you can buy from down the hill, so I guess that's why. Plus, you also have the archery store right there, and then the and I've been well, I've been picking a lot of ingredients. But whenever I go into an alchemist or a potion store, I just I buy all the ingredients <laughs> in order to work on uh, my potions because I find potions pretty handy. Until you become pretty powerful, they're pretty they're handy. But then after a while, it's like. Yeah, um, you don't need them anymore. <laughs> Especially if you have uh, start getting like the level 60, 70, then you don't need them at all, ever, really. And I tend to hoard them and carry them around for no good reason. 
So I've started dumping off like magicka potions and stamina ones because I carry them, but I never use them. I use the health ones, obviously, because I tend to put more points in stamina and magicka than I do health. And health I let lag behind. I guess because of the way I play it, I let them lag behind. So, yeah. So I'll probably start <coughs> working on some uh, little more magic. Uh, since my archer is pretty good now, or maybe some one-handed. I've been I've been kind of mixing in some one-handed. So I'm gonna maybe I'll do some sneaking sneak attacks, you know, because you can sneak the farmer pretty good. I'm, I would like to get up. I need to get into Black Reach. That's I love Black Reach. God, I need to get into there and then sneak up and start start snaking some uh, some farmer. That'll be a good time. Yeah, so I, I'm really I'm really liking how I play this one. Next one, I really got to change it up, though. Because I always rely on the damn archery. I got to change it up. Maybe I'll go, like, orc and go two-handed. Because I've never really done that. And just, like, you know, full-out hardcore armor. Just go blasting through dungeons, killing. I, I've never really played that way. So maybe I'll try that. You know, I have done some kind of one, one of the Magicka ways. You know, gone as a... I've never played as an elf, but I, uh, I did go my last character, the Khajiit, and I started out using magic for like the first 40 levels pretty heavily. So I've kind of gone that route, uh, but I've never really gone the two-handed you know, tank route, so maybe I, that's where I go on the next one. I'm not sure what level I'm going to play this character to. I'm not bored with it yet. I'm enjoying it just because I'm not overpowering it as I level up. So things are still a challenge. So that's kind of where I'm sitting right now. Um, uh, what else was it? Oh, did have some uh, more email this week, and I appreciate that. <coughs> Sorry for clearing my throat so much. Um, congested. I believe it's probably from being a Comic Con because <laughs> that's where you get sick. Uh, so uh, Josh says. Um, has been interesting to hear about your approach to the game and how you're handling various quests. I started a new character this week, a Breton Magic user. Trivian, the mediocre. That's another thing. I gotta come up with... I never use the backstory kind of thing. I need to start doing that. That, that seems fun. It, it would probably keep me from doing the same thing over and over. I'm following your lead and avoiding the main quest line. I agree that it's neat to wander around without the threat of dragons. Yeah, I've I'm real I continue to enjoy that because I find the dragons after a while I just found them tedious. It's a great quest, but I find them tedious in the normal game when I want to just go do some stuff. All right, I did a few quests at White Run to raise some gold and buy some spells and pay for a wagon to take me to Winterhold and and the Mage College. I do have a follower, Uthgird the Unbro oh that guy the Unbroken from White Run. Uh, speaking of that, I lost my follower somewhere. I believe we were battling uh, Spriggins, and she's gone. Ilya from uh, Darklight Tower? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't know where the hell she went. And she had a bunch of crap on her. I had her carrying for me, so I was kind of pissed. Okay, I do have a follower, Uthgird, the Unbroken from White Run, and I'm focusing on Destruction and Conjuration magic so far, but I'm only level 4. The game is a far cry more interesting if you have a character concept in mind, I've found. But it is far more difficult to play a mage than a martial character. Definitely. Definitely agree with that. I'm getting clobbered, but once I level my magic a little more, I should be set. I'm going to try and finish the mage's college quest before I move on to something else. But Skyrim gives me attention deficit disorder. I'm always curious what's over the next hill or cave I just found. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's my problem. I start these quests, and then I move on to something else and something else and something else. And when the game originally came out, you know, there was so many glitched quests. I would end up with, like, ten quests I couldn't finish or some crap like that. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. You start something, you go wander, and, and, oops, I ended up in this cave that's way bigger than I, like, Liar's Retreat. <laughs> uh Oh, also, he mentioned, uh, <clears throat> Josh mentioned that friends of his are doing a uh, podcast uh, about, um, I believe it was not Pulp Fiction, but Pulp Fiction's different. They may have been pulp, called Pulp Fiction, but a uh, weird fiction podcast called The Cromcast, C-R-O-M-C-A-S-T. 
I listened to the first episode. I really enjoyed it. They they talked a lot about the about Robert E. Howard's uh, Conan the Cremer, uh, Sumerian, sorry, Cremer, <laughs> Conan the Sumerian short stories. And uh, even though I've, I haven't really read those, having you know obviously a vague knowledge of the Conan story and stuff, I, I thought they did a great job just uh, keeping me completely interested. I've always been like a talk radio junkie since a kid. So listening to podcasts is the same kind of thing. And if you do a good job, no matter what you're talking about, if you enjoy it and you, you can put it across well, I'm, I'm down with that. So check out the Chromecast. It's at uh, the Chromecast.blogspot.com. So. And I uh, also had a quick email from uh, Flop Mopsy, who I believe has a YouTube channel. So check that out. And I appreciated that. Anyway, that's all, all I got for tonight. I'm dragging a bit, but uh, hopefully I'll get some more playing in the next week. And it'll be closer to the time when I actually record. <laughs> and my brain isn't fried from being away for a week. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep going with uh, my Argonian. I do love that I can swim incredibly long distances and not have to worry about drowning. I do like that a lot. It's a good feature. So I'm going to, who knows if I'll get to another quest or if I'll just keep hopping through stuff <laughs> like I ended up doing this time. But uh, so far I've done the mages and the forsworn, so that's not too bad. I got the thieves sitting there. They're waiting for me to come steal the ring. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, come pickpocket the ring and put it in somebody's pocket. So... I don't know. I'm I'm not really feeling the thieves one with this character. I don't know why. The last one I had no really. I don't know. Maybe because it was a Khajiit. I don't know. Everybody always calls him sneaky. <laughs> so I'm not feeling it with the Argonian. So maybe I'll go a different way. Maybe I'll head up to Companions. They have some decent quests. Um, I'm definitely going to cure myself. I was a werewolf last time. I was a Khajiit werewolf. But I never really used it. I just I don't know why it just didn't do anything for me, and I know I've been talking about doing the Dawn Guard ones because I want to see if the dragons show up at the lake, so maybe I could do that because that would be fun as shit. Plus, bet on vampires is fun. So, although I do have to deal with what's her name as a companion who always runs in front of you, which is better than Ilya being behind you and killing you constantly. But hey, so. We'll see where I'm off to next time. I'm sure I'll get sidetracked somewhere along the way. And if I go into Dragon's Reach and talk to the the mage in there and he tells me to go get the Dragon Stone one more time, I think I'm going to shoot him. Oh, I know. I didn't start it yet. Relax, dude. I just want to buy some stuff and freaking use your, use your enchanting table, okay? You don't have to tell me to hurry up because the Yarl wants me to go every single time I walk in this door. I just want to buy some stuff. That's all. Sell some stuff. Buy some stuff. Get some soul gems. Give you some soul. Give you some uh, staffs that I, I'll never use. That's all I want. All right. All right. You can uh, reach me at a Skyrim podcast. Ad- oh, I'm sorry. That is not the email address. It's a Skyrim Addict Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can send a text or voice memo type thing there. You can send it as a voice memo MP3 traditional email whatever you whatever you like there all right everyone take it easy uh, hello everyone uh, i'm back uh <clears throat> yeah i did get to play a decent amount this week but i didn't really i did some quests but i mostly did some uh smithing and alchemy and stuff but um I kind of want to get into a couple emails first, only because they have a couple things I wanted to talk about anyway, which kind of works into what I kind of did this week anyway, oddly enough. So that's perfect. So uh, Dave wrote in. Thanks. I appreciate it. To anybody who emails in or anything, I, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it because I, I didn't realize anybody would actually listen because the, sh- the game's been out for so damn long. <laughs> so I do appreciate it so much. Um so he's playing on the Xbox as well. So he just uh, he's enjoying the podcast, and he's a recent citizen of Skyrim. Started playing about six months ago, but uh, only gets to play about three to five hours a week. 
And uh, like many of us, I'm sure he spends more time thinking about his character than he actually gets to play. Yeah, that's <laughs> that may be a problem that I have. Uh, he's level 32 sneaky archer. And <clears throat> he hasn't really come across uh, most of the quests yet. But uh, that's easy to not do. <laughs> if you're just out and enjoying playing the game, you can easily not come across quests and just get caught up in a million different things while you're out there. Um, <clears throat> so he wanted to know like tips on smithing, enchanting, alchemy, and things like that, getting materials. And that's kind of what I did a lot of this week. Um, so basically, when I like to boost up some out al- For alchemy, here's what I do. I obviously pick stuff that I see. But once I get to a certain level, not all that high either, a certain alchemic level, I, I'll i go to the whatever, I don't know, whatever alchemy store happens to be in whatever place. I tend to hit White Run a lot just because the four stores are like right there. And then there's two blacksmiths, and then you can go up the hill to Dragon Reach to do some enchanting, and there's another guy there. It, it's just a good central location for me. Um, I will obviously pick anything I can find, and then I will also buy every ingredient in the store <laughs> each time. So I have to have a little – usually you have to have a couple thousand gold going on to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, you can sell back, obviously, potions you make and stuff. But um, I – it's – and then – when I'm early on, I eat one of each thing, obviously, to you know find what ingredient it is or what um, effect it has. At least you get one of the effects on there. And I, I start making them. Early on, what I do is I make a potion that I know is going to work, and then I add something to it in hopes that it, like, uh, I don't know offhand what makes what. But say I have a blue flower, a red flower, and uh, one of the mushrooms. And the two flowers make something. I'm, I'll throw in the mushroom just to see. And, and that's a good way of finding the effects. I don't like going to, even though I've played it a billion times, I don't like really going to the wiki and looking up what does what. But uh, that's obviously a way you can do it too. It has lists all the ingredients, what they do and all that. But, you know, for a discovery way, I, I find obviously eating one of each of the ingredients and... When you're making your potions, you can make a known potion and add something to it that you don't know the effects of and see, you know, what happens. And that's how you you can find quite a few effects that way. And as you start leveling up, if you find invisibility is a great one to make because it really bumps you up, bumps your uh, level up quickly, especially invisibility with something like invisibility with i don't know i forget exactly what ones are with it but maybe like restore health or whatever it is or heavy armor or something like that but what in a mixed invisibility potion man that really boosts your level quickly and and also like you don't even have to use them (laughs) they're good to sell back to buy more ingredients to raise your alchemy level so usually i'll hoard them like once i get over encumbered like this week when i was playing i get over encumbered a lot of what I had was ingredients. So I, I'd i been doing my, um, whatchamacallit, alchemy, <laughs> draw blank, up at the Mage's College because I'm the head mage now or uh, whatever, you know. So I put them in all in a barrel next to the alchemy table, which is what I used to do with my last character too, or too, when I had the Hearthfire, you know, one of the Hearthfire houses, I forget which one it was, but I had to have a barrel where I'd just throw ingredients in, and every once in a while when I'd get a ton of them, I'd go and make a bunch of potions. Some I'd carry with me to use, some I'd carry with me to sell. I have a problem with hoarding potions, because I never use the stamina or magicka ones really that much. I I keep a few magicka because I do use them sometimes. Stamina I never use. So I I tend to just – I've started to learn to sell them off because I'm like a hoarder carrying stuff around. I carry too many rings, too many necklaces, too many <laughs> – too much crap like that. Too much uh, 
smithing stuff with me. You know, I'm carrying ingots around for no reason. But yeah, for alchemy, that's how I kind of go about alchemy and and working on my level. And you know, I'll pick up anything I see, obviously, and then I'll every each alchemy store I happen to be in, I'll just buy all the ingredients or you know whatever. Um, person I'm having to buy stuff from, I'll see if they have ingredients and buy from them. But um, that's uh, basically my alchemy strategy. As far as smithing, hold on, I'm going to take a sip of coffee here because it's the morning. As far as smithing goes, I um, do sim- a similar thing. I, you know, I'll collect obviously whatever I find out. I don't do a whole lot of mining. Although I do have a, for a while early on, um, earlier it, earlier in the character, I do it a little differently than as it gets later on when I have more money. Earlier on, I was <clears throat> doing some mining and stuff. And what I did actually was uh, smith up the pickaxe and enchant it so you could use it as a weapon so you're not just carrying around this 10-pound thing that does nothing. At least you can break it out as a weapon every now and again. Um, so I, I would do some mining when I happen to come across stuff. <clears throat> so that, that was where I got some things. And then other, obviously the pelts and things like that I get from animals. So that's just easier, especially because you run into bears like every four seconds. So that's easy to find those. I generally don't get the other animals. <clears throat> I don't go shooting up foxes and stuff with this character, but uh, I have an idea for my next one. But anyway. So that's kind of how I go about getting that. And then I just buy stuff from generally, once again, the White Run, the blacksmith there. Because there's two people. There's uh, Adriana, I think it is, or something like that. And then the guy inside. Plus there's the one up at the Companions Guild up the hill. So you got all those areas. And I start out with leather and leather hide, iron, obviously, to get it built up. But good thing to, if you're doing the mages, and want to build up your smithing too if you have the transmute spell making jewelry is much more efficient in building your smithing than making the iron stuff because you don't need to carry as you know obviously also it sells for more it doesn't weigh that much so you can make a lot more of it and not be over encumbered so there's all those things too so Making jewelry a good way to, and then the jewelry you go take and chant it, sell it off to the guy right there, buy some more gemstones. That's that's kind of how I go about it. I have like a when I'm going to work on those things, I kind of hang around White Run after I've built up stuff. Like I'll do a bunch of smithing, buy some of her stuff, you know, to do some more smithing. Run up the hill, enchant it if I ha- if I'm able to do that. Sell it off, buy some soul gems from the guy <laughs> up at uh, Dragon's Reach. I forget his name for some reason. Um, then I'll go back down the hill, maybe buy some stuff from people. But uh, that that's kind of how I go about it and how I get it built up. Right now, I'm actually, with this character, I'm at 92 enchanting. So I'm getting close to being able to have the dual enchants on things. So that, that um, that's what I'm hoping to get to. But I'm I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to go with this character or not because I'm at 42 right now overall. Uh, I've kind of switched over to two-handed from the archery. I use the archery when I'm going to when I want to grab some soul gems because I don't have a two-handed weapon right now that uh, has, with the soul capture on it or soul trap on it. Sorry. So I have a bow with that. So right now I was uh, was that Mizka lift or Mizka left. I was kind of want. I got halfway through there before I got over encumbered, and I was knocking out some Falmer with the bow, so that was giving me some souls and got a million Falmer ear. But um, that's kind of how I go about those. Um, enchanting the same way, just enchant everything you make. You know, obviously, the more expensive the item, the more it boosts up your smithing or enchanting or whatever. <clears throat> and same thing with alchemy. I've made invisibility, mixed invisibility potions that were, you know showed up for like uh, what uh, nine hundred and some gold when I was making them. It really, you know, it goes up at least to half a level or maybe a little more. So that that's good ways to do that. But um, 
Yeah, otherwise I just grab stuff where I find it. I do do some mining early on, so that's good to do early on before you have some money. I find it tedious after I have money, so I just buy the shit. And and after a while, I tend to just um, – what I'll do is, you know, if you're going through dungeons or wherever, blah, 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 and you're grabbing stuff, I'll come back. I will smith that stuff up, sell it, buy whatever ingots I want, whatever side I'm having to be going up, light or heavy, and I will make stuff with that, then go enchant it and sell it. So that's kind of how my whole cycle works with that kind of thing. But um, thanks again for listening. Uh, that was uh, – oops, I'm sorry. That was Dale, not Dave. I think I said Dave. It's early. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> All right. And uh, Josh wrote in. Good to hear from him again. And um, he hasn't had a chance to play in a few days, but he is starting the Mage College Quests. And he's outside the Skeletal Dragon Lair in Labyrinthia. That is an awesome thing. Um, he's playing Pure Magic, No Armor, which you, that is so tough in the damn beginning. Oh, my God. And his strongest spell is the Flame Atronarch. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> the only problem with that one is they kind of find you after a while. But, uh, yeah, that that is a tough spot, the the Skeletal Dragon. That's, that thing will get you. Uh, that was a fun room, though. And that's, speaking of that, that's kind of, for my next character, and then I'll get into what I was doing this week. I was thinking of going straight up Assassin Mage with a dagger and magic, and that's it. No armor, no nothing. And just be purely bad. Just Assassin. Flat out Assassin. Kill anyone, anything, steal, whatever. I think that will be my next character. I think I'll actually have, like, a backstory. I've never done that before, but I think I will do that. Um, as far as this week, I did play quite a... Well, I went to a couple places, but I was more... I was more working on the smithing alchemy and things like that, so that that did take up more of my time than um, kind of roaming. I, I did... This may have been over two weeks. I don't even remember. Anyway, I went to uh, oh, I started the what is that red? Um, oh, I forget. Why can't I remember the name of it? I'll think of it. But I ended up at uh, Broken Tower Redoubt, just wandering around. It's kind of a um, it's built into like the side of a mountain, kind of. It's like three levels. And there's uh, the Forsworn who are useless because they carry nothing on them because they're like evil hippies or something. I don't know. So I'd, there I was still – that was before I was leveled up a little more. It was earlier. This may have been last week. I don't even remember. But um, I kind of snuck through there and worked my bow and uh, ended up being able to like three-shot the Briar Heart. So – so that wasn't bad, but they have such crappy stuff. The Force Warren, Ugh. They're, they're tough at times, but they don't have anything. <laughs> uh, then I hit Bleak One Bluff, which is another Briarheart thing, and that's where I ended up getting <clears throat> beaten down by the Briarheart because I was trying to do everything two handed, and I was not real good there. <laughs> so he beat me down a couple times before I was able to uh, to do that. So. None of these were really quests. These were the kind of places I hit. Oh, uh, and then Sundered Towers. I did start the um, Red Eagle, but I didn't finish it. So, uh, once again, Forsworn. <laughs> and I do have the sword, but I have to do the second part of that quest. I still have to finish that off. Um, I went and got into your staff. If you're doing the Mages College, he's one of the guys there, and he asked you to go get a staff for him. I picked that up in uh, Boulder Fall. And then, um, boop, 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 what else did I hit? These are just some of the places. Let's see. Oh, the Forsaken Cave. That was, uh, in the beginning, I think they're leveled up, but for me, they were snow bears. Uh, and then Draugr. But there was one, <laughs> it was a Death Lord, or was it one of the other Draugr? I don't, I don't quite remember, but he would, as he was about to, a uh, Draugr right, maybe. As he's about to shout, I would shoot him with an arrow. And, <laughs> It worked out timing wise, where every time I reload it, he was about to shout, and I would hit him with an arrow. So it would be like, <gasps> and then I'd hit him with an arrow. Ah, 
and then that happened like four times. <laughs> and I almost got pinched between one of those stupid floors that shoots up in the air and there's spikes on the ceiling. Yeah, that was not good. Now, this, okay, I got to the end of this. Oh, this is the white file quest. That's what I was doing. All right, so I get to the end of this, and uh, Coramil, the there's a, is he a Death Lord? Or, I forget what it was. I think it might have been like a, there's a dragon shot in this room. I don't think he's a dragon priest, though. I don't, I'm not sure. Can't remember offhand. But uh, the coffin opened up, but he never came out of it. He just laid in there. So the the word wall on this one is up up some set a set of steps behind or two sets of steps behind the coffin area. So I snuck up there and was able to shoot down into the coffin and kill him before he came out. I'm like, that, so that was a weird glitch. And the white file thing is behind there. So I have played that one before where it was oh a million times tougher. I wasn't full. I was only probably level thirty eight or thirty nine when I hit that one. So. It wasn't highly leveled up. I think the last time I played it, I was pretty highly leveled before I did the white file. I might have been in the 60s or 70s. So, Oh, and I finally got the uh, Dark Brother, the note from the Dark Brotherhood they sent to me. So that was sweet of them. I think I'm going to join them instead of uh, go against them because I want the horse. <laughs> pretty much. Because that horse is awesome. Shadow Mirror. Best horse. So I got that. So I gotta, I'll, I'll get involved in that at some point. And I was up when I was up at the Mages College. I headed down into the Midden because I realized I had never done that one where you stick the rings on that. Uh, is it a Daedra hand or Dramora hand? Like that's in the middle of the Midden down there, the Midden depths maybe. I don't think I've ever done that. Done the rings on that, maybe once, but it was so anticlimactic. So I got the rings. I'm not going to tell, you know, in case anybody hasn't done it. The rings are around the college. Just That's all you got to know. Um, so I stuck them on the hand. And for those of you who do know, you know where it's at. So I stuck them on the hand. And I'm like, all right, this should be pretty cool. It should be a pretty big battle. Uh, no, no. And I was using two-handed. I'm only like a level 33 two-handed. I'm not like some powered up two-handed smasher. And like. One swing, and it was a kill cam, and the guy, <laughs> and he was dead. Velik Sane, I guess it is. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> that kind of uh, was uh, anticlimactic, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what happened there. And then I, I hit a couple other little places here and there. Uh, but the, it, the last thing I'm currently on now is that... Mizcha left, Mizcha left. I don't know how. M Z I N C H A L E F T. It's a big like Dwemer ruin up uh, by Dawnstar. It's kind of down in the snow, down in like a little, like a little hole, <laughs> almost in the mountain, or I should say, big hole. The beginning part of it is like all bandits, and it's, until you get further in, and then it's the spheres and the spiders and stuff who like killed the bandits and then you get into the depths and that's like the Falmer and the spheres and the spiders and I think there's uh, one of the, the big guys down there but I, I got oh because I'm going to get I think Grim Seavers down there which is a weapon you got to get for somebody <clears throat> so I'm kind of in the middle of that but I got completely over encumbered when I was going down there because um, if you're going in there only have what you need with you because you're going to pick up a lot of shit along the way because there's so many people in there you know bandits generally have some decent stuff and um uh, the farmer you know they all have ears <laughs> and things like that i don't i don't usually pick up their weapons or or anything like that uh at this point where i'm where my guy's at now i'm only looting stuff that can make me decent money <laughs> and uh or is useful whereas early on in the game i'll just loot everything and then go sell it you know, as a way to kind of build up my my cash. But yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna finish uh, Ms. Chalift, Chalift, or whatever Howard up for you say it. I'm gonna finish that up um, next time I play. Hopefully tomorrow or next day or something. But yeah, like uh, going back to the email from earlier from Dale. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, how many people out there are doing whatever they do during the day and are thinking, you know? Maybe I'll go this way with the character, and if I do this, and blow it. 
I think we I think we all do that. Uh, but yeah, for my next character, I've really been thinking about the assassin mage thing, and I think I'll continue. Even when I do that one, I will continue not doing the dragon story because I really enjoy it this way for now. Having done it so long the other way, I, I think if I go straight assassin, and build up my magic, do the mages college, be purely bad, join like the thieves guild, build up my sneak, build up, uh, you know, put a little in the one handed so that the, you know, I, when I sneak with the uh, blade, I can take them down pretty easily, but go like straight up like destruction magic and, you know, just see how, how strong I can get going that way. Cause that'll be cool. Just pick off people, steal from everyone, just be purely bad. I think that's the way I'm going to go on that one. Where this guy I got now is kind of middle of the road. I don't go too far over the line. My last character, my Khajiit, after a while, I just got bored. I couldn't even get into, uh, was it Morthal? I think it might have been Morthal. I don't know, one of the towns. I had killed too many people. And every time I went in there, the guards would just swamp me. And then I would kill more. And then it would get worse. <laughs> but I was pretty much bored at that point with that character. I really should have started a new character sooner. But I was at the point where I was trying to get to max out to get to 81. So I was just doing stupid shit. And... Battling guards is a good way to, like, if you're... I think I need to, like, up my one-handed and two-handed. So I was just kind of doing that. And uh, my my armors were, like, ridiculous with enchants on them and stuff. But, oh, my, on my last character, if you've ever done the assassins... Um, you know, the assassin quest line. Oh, did I just forget what the hell it's called? <laughs> you know. With Nocturna and all that. But anyway, there's one part where you, uh, there's a high-ranking official you kill. Well, I had, like, the royal robes enchanted, and I was running around wearing them. I wasn't even wearing armor anymore. I was just wearing the <laughs> enchanted royal robes and, like, the royal hat <laughs> and things like that. So, that's a, when you get, re if you go, if you play for a long time and have a really high level of character, you can make some pretty interesting outfits that are pretty heavily enchanted. So that's all I got for this week. Um, hopefully next week I'll get a little more play in. Uh, that's my, uh, that's my goal anyway. And I'll, hopefully I'll remember to go finish, uh, the Grim's Eaver thing and Ms. Calift. Min's Calift. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> and hopefully I'll remember to go back there. Does I tend to forget. Like, I forgot about Red Eagle. I forgot to go back up there. That's why I still... So now I'm dragging around the sword that I need to go get rid of. <laughs> so, uh, that's another thing. I have a lot of crap in my inventory that's, like, from half-finished quests that I need to go get rid of because it's just taking up weight. And I'm collecting cogs for somebody right now, and I have, like, eight of them. That's, they're 10 pounds each. I need to go get rid of those. I need to get two more and then get rid of those. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, oh, and I, did, oh, I know what I wanted to mention. For anybody who's, like, started playing relatively recently or maybe picking it up when it comes out, in, you know, because the super, like, Bethesda Elder Scrolls pack is coming out in the fall. Every game, all the DLC, all that, that's cool for the PC. That is awesome. But um, for newer Skyrim players, even older ones, if you haven't heard of it, um, it's a podcast that actually just ended. It's called Thumcast, T-H-U-U-M-C-A-S-T. Absolutely friggin' awesome. I loved that show. Uh, I think it ended in, like, June or something like that. Um, but for people who just started playing, I would go back and listen to those. Those are pretty awesome podcasts. I really enjoy those. So that's just, a, you know, for anybody who hasn't heard it or, or maybe uh, just started playing. So that's all I got. Take it easy, everyone. Hey, what's up, everyone? <clears throat> Scarematic Podcast at gmail.com. Um, anyway, yeah, that's where the feedback goes. So anyway, I finished up some stuff from last week. I finished up that uh, Zinchalift uh, stuff and got the Grim Seaver. Uh, so that, that area is, uh, you know, you start out with all the bandits, and as you get deeper into it, it's the Falmer. Um, you go into that big op kind of open area where part of that uh, 
city that like Dumner City or Dumner City is um underwater except for the higher parts and just a lot of farmer <laughs> and then at the end you get the centurion and the sphere so i like battle on that little especially when you're lower level battle on the centurions is pretty fun you can kind of sneak around and cuz they're pretty clumsy <laughs> i mean if they get you they'll get you but uh they're pretty clumsy they're not like quick like the giants so but uh, that was that was a pretty fun battle. I ended up getting the Grim Seaver. That's also where you, um, I'm not doing that quest, but where you can, uh, where you get that cube from that guy up in the ice. What the fuck's his name? I forget. Anyway, that's kind of where you do that too. So after I left there, I I was overburdened again, so I got rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, d- did a lot of smithing again and a lot of um, alchemy and some enchanting, but not a lot. Alchemy wise, I've been putting some points into it. I, I'm almost done with this character, but I saw something intriguing. <laughs> Somebody had smithed a broom or something. Can you smith a broom? Really? I feel like they were bullshitting, and uh, I need to know. All right. So if anybody smithed anything like weird, obviously you smith pick pickaxes and axes. You can smith those up, and at least if you're going to end up carrying them, at least they're usable. Um, really a broom? I don't know. And it was smithed up to like 600 or something damage points. I, I mean, I've only gotten bows up to like, uh, grant elven bow. The elven bow, I've gotten up to close to 300 with enchantments. So with, uh, you know, en- enchanted, whatever I may have on, uh, gauntlets and, you know, necklace ring, whatever. I've gotten that up to about 300, and crossbows, like, 380. What the? Am I, can I get things higher than that? I don't know. Somebody let me know if they know, uh, if there's some, you know, not uh, not a cheat, but uh, a way where if you keep going, you can, you can get the stuff even higher than that. I mean, I was, when I did it, I was leveled up, you know, I was like a level 81 character, so it, he, was, I was maxed out on everything. And I think I had it. I was able to make dragon scale stuff and dragon bone stuff. So yeah, I mean I, I was pretty high up there. So maybe maybe I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> but um, I wandered over and ended up at uh, Frostmere Crypt, which uh, you get there, and um, you got to follow these a uh, couple bandits into the crypt, uh, Kier and Raji. <laughs> And, you know, pick off some bandits on the way, things like that. Uh, There's some silver ore on the way down for some mining. I did that. And then uh, when you get down to the, like this, uh, like a veil or whatever it is, you get down in there and here's laying on the ground just about to die. And he lets you know that Rajir has, uh, you know, obviously double crossed him since he stabbed him and left him there to die. And uh, the pale lady pops up, which is basically a wisp, wisp mother. So that was, uh, I accident, and I was all the way back at the entrance where the dude's laying on the ground dead. And she popped up, and I, was, uh, and I wasn't even thinking, and I just shot her. And she was dead. So that kind of, yeah. I wanted to have a little, I wanted to battle a little differently, but, um, I had the bow on, and it just was a reaction. I didn't even think of it. I was like, oh, damn. That was, this would have been a lot more fun if I went in there two-handed or went in there with uh, shield and sword, which I kind of switched over to later. Uh, when I left there, I was just, like, walking, and then all of a sudden there was, you know, the random fights on the side of the road. There was a conjurer and uh, two guys, and uh, I it was I laced this guy with a bow in the face from behind a tree, like up a hill. Oh, and he was on the move. It was like one of my favorite shots. <laughs> and I got a kill cam. I hit him right in the mouth and took him to the ground. I was like, nice. That was, that was pretty nice. And then I found stone hills that I don't think I've ever been to before, <laughs> but not a lot goes on there apparently. Cause I had to look it up after I found it. I'm like, I don't think I've ever been to stone hills. Uh, it's just uh, a mine really. Uh, iron 
So I went in there and mined the iron and then just transmuted it to gold. Um, uh, when I looked up, there was only like some minor quests that go on there. Nothing, you know, just, you know, delivering stuff back and forth type quests. So I I wasn't there very long, but I, it was weird. I don't think I've ever been to Stone Hills. So that that was odd because I saw the name pop up. I'm like, Stone Hill? I'm, I've been playing this game a long time. So I did a lot of uh, a lot of wandering to open up the map because I realized I hadn't even been down to Falkreath yet, which I got to at the very end of my play. Uh, I came across Gjenstang, Gjenstang, I guess it is, uh, at the daytime, and when I looked it up, I realized, ah, yeah, you got to go there at night. So if you come across Gjenstang, go there at night because nothing's going on at day. Nothing at all. So I got to go back there and do that at night because I don't think I ever have. Or I probably haven't just forgot about it because it was probably two years ago. <laughs> so I continued on, um, came across a, another ruin. And uh, oh, I still have the Red Eagle Sword because I haven't finished that quest yet. Shit, I got to do that. The uh, I came across uh, Full Gunther. You go in the beginning, there's a dead adventure. Whenever there's a dead adventure, you know something's going on inside. So um, you, you head in, and uh, as you get further down, you battle a few Draugr here and there. But there's a bunch of dead Draugr around, and you find this guy, Deanna's Valens, and he's dead, but he's got an ivory dragon claw and a journal. So you kind of follow that through. And... Uh, did a battle with uh, was a was he a Death Lord? Yeah, I think he was a Death Lord at the end. Mercroll, Mickroll, and uh, I used double swords and some sneaking with him. Actually, I used a dagger and the Red Eagle sword is what I ended up using because I still have the Red Eagle blade. And uh, that doesn't. I mean, I only think burns like five, so it's not like high powered or anything but because i snuck up behind him i got 15 times and i used that and a dagger the dagger had a soul enchant on it but uh, i was able to take him out pretty pretty quickly which was cool and in that battle like he usually opens up uh, all these other coffins and the draugr come out the thralls come out but um since i got him they all died <laughs> except for one so so yeah I, that 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 um and Fall Gunther, I basically went two handed or you know, two one handed weapons. I went with the dagger and the the red eagle sword and took care of that. And then I got his uh sword. I think there I think in uh, that one you get a sword from him. It's like the black blade or something. I think that's what I picked up there. And then I headed over to uh Lost Knife Hideout after I I went and cleared off some stuff, did you know, popped around to a few towns. The only time I fast travel is when I get when I want to get rid of stuff, you know, like when I'm about to be over encumbered. I just, that way, because I don't want to waste a lot of time running between towns because I don't have that much time to play. So, but I do like wandering otherwise. So when I got back out, I uh, I got the quest about there was a quest about clearing out Lost Knife Hideout, so I went and did that. <laughs> a lot of bandits. I went with the sneaking and two blades in there. I used the pale. Uh, I did. No, no, you know what? Okay. Lost knife. All right. You go in like regular cave at first, but it's a pretty big cave. So um, I went in there and used, I think I was using, no, I was using sword. I was using the pale blade and a shield because uh, I, I didn't sneak at all. I just ran in and just started beating people. That was different. So I've never really done that. I was having fun doing that. And uh you know, it's a it's a good good bandit cave. Lots of different areas. It's good for sneaking too, actually. It's a fun sneaking cave because you can take some long shots on people. So you can really work on some fun archery from like real long distances. Which is odd in a cave, you don't usually get that. <clears throat> so I'm a little congested this morning. But uh I finished that up, you know, cleared out the cleared out the hideout knocked off that little bit of a quest I, I, my quest log is like ridiculous right now and i was having a problem with one 
uh, where I was supposed to give somebody at the Bard's College, Bard's, uh, college a um, the Alchemist song or something. Fuck, the fucking arrow is there for her, but she's not there. Or he, I don't know. It's always in the same spot, but the person's never there. I'm like, I just want to clear this off. <laughs> I can't. Uh, so apparently that glitched out on me, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that person got killed or something by a vampire. Who knows? So I was like, fuck, that sucks. Ugh. And I, I was getting my... Where did I go to? What town? Solitude. I get into Solitude and... Uh, another Argonian attacked me. Was it Jiraha or something? I, all of a sudden I walk into town and he's like trying to kill me. I'm like, what, what the hell? <laughs> and then all the guards are attacking me. I'm like, all I'm trying to do is go... Finish this quest. I just had to go tell somebody and get my reward for clearing out the cave. And that's it. So I had to run out of town, run down into the swamps, hide, go back into town, pay a bounty because I ended up killing. A, oh, I I put on a flame cloak and because um, <laughs> I have to use these flame cloak spells uh, that I'm doing for somebody at the mages. Uh, you know, college up at Winterhold. And, of course, obviously the the guards ran into the flames. So, yeah. I had some bounties I had to pay off. It wasn't too bad. It was only like 160 gold. I've had it. Oh, God. I had Mark Karth up to like, I don't even know, some ridiculous amount one time. Because I, I just kept going there with my last character and just fighting the guards and killing them all. <laughs> so, that was at the end of that character. I was, I was getting bored, obviously. But uh, anyway, after I, I get done in Solitude, cleared out a bunch of stuff, uh, cleared up my bounty issues. Um, oh, has anybody ever had the glitch? Uh, if you do, uh, there's a quest in the uh, Dark Brotherhood. You do something in Solitude, and then people are looking for you, obviously. Uh, there's like three Thalmor agents that hang out in the tower, and... My last character, they were there every time I went to the town. Every time. But they were just standing there. And I would go up there. I would kill them. They would never move or attack. And they would never look for me. But they would always be there showing red on the uh, screen. You know, showing up as red dots. Like, that's so weird. It must have been... I don't know if that will happen this time or not. I'll, I'll have to see. Because I did... I did go around a room and go to sleep. And woke up in the abandoned shack. And start at the Dark Brotherhood. So that's where I'm I'm going to be going on my next. uh, That's where I'll be heading next. Probably next time I play starting that. But uh, I didn't this time. Because then I got distracted after I left the Abandoned Shack. (laughs) Ended up at. um, Ended up at Hilgren's Tomb. Uh, You get there. And there's a guy named Galdir. Who he's so you go into the first room and he's standing there with his like back to the door. And I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna kill this guy. And I was like, mm, Maybe he's good. Let me go check. <laughs> so, so thankfully, I didn't attack him. And yes, he was good. Uh, and you gotta go in there, you gotta stop Val's Vern, who is a conjurer who's you know messing with his family. Uh, I guess his aunt or grandmother or mother, I don't know, I forget what her name was, Anga or something like that. She went down there to try and stop him. So but the pain in the ass with this one is he wants to go along with you. And, you know, he'll sneak when you sneak, but he's still in the way. So I I went in there with him, and it's just a pain. I realized since my companion, I like having a companion early in the game when you can't carry that much stuff. When, you know, when your capacity to carry isn't that good. It's nice for that. It's also nice if you're doing the dragon quest because you can, you know, especially if you're using the, if you're an archer or a mage or something, you can use that person as kind of a tank and you can be off to the side. That's one good thing uh, the dog from Clavicus, Clavicus Vile quest is for. <laughs> he's great for that. So if you get him, like, and you have no companion, I mean, he's a pain in the ass because you can't sneak anywhere and he runs up and fucking gets involved in everything. But for, like, battling dragons, number one, he doesn't die. So the dragon will battle him and then you kind of just... You can back off a little bit, and if you're, you know, a distance character, you can you can uh, fight a little better that way. But uh, you can't sneak because the fucking dog runs into everything. But uh, anyway, 
a lot of Draugr down there in the in Hilgren's tomb. Mostly snuck it. Um, used uh, I I think I used my bow here because I knew if I used the blades, the idiot Goldier would run in front of me and I would hit him a bunch of times. So I went with I. I tried sneaking. He snuck most of the time until something woke up, and then he ran ahead, which is a pain in the ass. But I was able to – it was fun because I was able to shoot around him and stuff like that. At least it was a little bit of a challenge like that, shooting around him. And there was a lo- I'm getting to the level now where there's a lot more Death Lords, Draugr Death Lords. So. And it, there was Hulked Draugr in this one, which I must be specific to this uh, this tomb. And then at the end, there's like this massive Draugr battle, which is pretty cool. The guy, the conjurer, I get, the, he he was done quick. But uh, the Draugr just keep coming there. It's probably like 15 of them or something like that. Like two or three coffins open, two or three coffins open. You know, you kill them off, two or three more open, blah, blah, blah. So it's pretty fun. Different sides of the room. You're going back and forth. I like a nice battle like that. And uh, it would have been more fun if uh, Goldier wasn't there, because then I could have, uh, I would have had to sneak around a little more, been a little more cautious. But uh, he would generally take on one, and I would, as he was taking it on, I would kind of shoot around him <laughs> and uh, and pop it. But uh, yeah, I ended up finishing that up. That was a, that was a fun little cave. Uh, I don't think I picked up any shouts this time. Not that I'm using them, but uh, yeah. And at the end of this all, I ended up wandering to Falkreath finally. On the way, I got, I think I battled like, there's a lot of Spriggans down that way. <laughs> so I ended up battling a lot of Spriggans. And I came across a guy, I don't, where was I? I was just outside of Falkreath, I think. Or it might have been in Falkreath. And there was a guy talking about, was that at a, maybe it was at a mill? I don't know. But I think I may have done this. This may be the quest with the little girl. I don't know. Is there a vampire in Falkreath? Yeah, I think there is. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, because I went down there, and I'm going to head over to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary and go through that quest line. I've done that both ways. I've I've eliminated them and been a part of them. Uh, I like doing it as a part of them because some of their quests are fun. Eliminating them. Uh, eliminating them isn't really super fun. It's just a single, you know, kind of a battle. So I think I'd rather be a part of it. And I almost turned into a vampire. I didn't realize. I got bit, and all of a sudden I'm going through a cave, and the red, you know, the red flashes on the screen. Oh, you're feeling hungry. I'm like, oh, shit. Let me take a cure, cure disease potion here. But, yeah, so next time I'll probably... Because right now I'm at the footstep of uh, Falkreath. So next time I'll probably be heading through and down to the uh, Dark Brotherhood. Although I'm sure I could be distracted before then. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's time. Uh, I'm really thinking it's time to change characters. But I I got to know people who've played a long time, smithing-wise. I, what What's the highest you've gotten things up to as far, you know, even with the, say, with enchantments and stuff? Obviously, it's much lower without. I mean, is there... I didn't realize you could get it. I know you can get, like, potions. The best potion I ever made was, like, uh, 128% smithing or something like that, I think it was. I thought that was where you... And the enchantments, I think you can only max them out at, what, like, 38%? So you can have, I think, three things plus 38, you know. Enhance smithing 38% on three items. Uh, probably, a, I think it's ring, necklace, and armor. Or maybe it's uh, maybe it's four things. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't... I don't know how people are smithing things up ridiculously. Maybe I'll have to look that up on YouTube. But um, if anybody knows how to do that or has done some crazy smithing... I mean, because I do it, but uh, at some point, the weapons become so powerful that really, it doesn't matter. Right now, what I'm finding is when I go two-handed or, or with the one-handed weapons, uh, it's it's more of a fun battle. So I'm going to s- probably switch to 
for the Dark Brotherhood, I'll probably just use a dagger because that's more fun sneaking, you know. And I want to start using my destruction magic too. So um, I think I'm at level 44 now. My enchant. Uh, my big thing is get the enchanting to 100 so I can do the double enchants. Right now, I think I'm at like 92, 93. I enchanted a bunch of stuff last night. So I'm, I might do that, get that to 100. Alchemy, I'm in like the 60s. I'm actually relatively high up on that. And I think I'm in the same area on my uh, archery, 60, 70, something like that. So I'm, I may switch over to some destruction magic because that'll make things a little more more difficult. The problem is, oh, I did notice uh, my flames don't do a whole hell of a lot of damage to the things I'm battling now. Because I just did basic flames for one thing. I was like, ah, oh, I'll just take out this dragger like, dragger like this. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that because uh, I am blasting him with flames and nothing is happening. <laughs> oh, and I, I just went and grabbed Dawn... Uh, what the hell's that sword name? Dawnbreaker. Sorry. I had it in a had it in my chest up at the college at Winterhold. So I'm gonna start using that since I've been heading into a lot of Draugr tombs. Uh, Draugr tombs. I've never really used that. I heard it's pretty cool though. It has a pretty cool effect. I mean, because whenever I've gotten it, the other weapons I've had have always been way better than it. And I've always tended to use ones I make as opposed to the ones you find. I save the ones you find i don't know why i just stick them in a chest and same thing with potions i try and sell as many po- you can only sell so many things though like I, I probably have like 400 potions in some stupid barrel ones that i'm never going to use because it's shit i just made to level up i should just go give it away <laughs> i should just take them all and go give them away to people i wish i could do that that would be pretty cool uh, i can go sell them to the stores for free technically so maybe i'll go do that just get rid of them dump them off on them Maybe they'll have lots of money next time I get back there. I don't know how that works out. But, yeah, that's all I kind of did this time. I, yeah, I do want to hear smithing hints or, you know, the best smithing you've done. Because for me, I generally stick with – I've always leaned towards the Elven because it's it's pretty good and it's light. Um, right now I have, I am up to, gla- I did just, uh, do the glass. So I'll probably be switching over to glass. I don't like the look of the glass though. And I can't, the next one's dragon and I can't, I'm not doing the dragon storyline. So there's no point in me getting it. <laughs> so, so I, I'm going to probably switch over to glass and see what I can get stuff up to. But, uh, I got a bunch of fucking materials right now that I'm dragging around that I got to get rid of too. So I'm probably gonna do some some glass enchanting once or smithing and then enchanting once I once I uh, get a little further along on Dark Brotherhood. I have been using. I have a, oh god, I got a lot of potions that I got to get rid of, and I got a lot of soul gems. Yeah, I got I got to do some inventory clean out because I'm only every time I clean out I'm only leaving myself with like 150 weight left. And that's not a lot now, yeah. You because know, especially when you're battling the Death Lords and stuff, because you know if they have a ebony war axe or ebony great sword, those things weigh a lot, and they're good money. You know, I'm, I think I have like eleven thousand gold right now, so it's not like a lot. But I'm like, oh wow, that's a I could get like five hundred for that. Let me take that, <laughs> and then I don't, you know, it weighs twenty, has twenty weight. I'm like, oh. I can't because I have 87 soul gems and 400 potions for no good reason. So I did start clearing a lot of those out. And I started using my – I had a paralysis potion I made. I started using that. Uh, I was using that when I was doing some two-handed. Especially I was using it on uh, more difficult characters that that I wasn't really quite leveled up to battle as a two-handed person that kind of would beat me down in like three hits. <laughs> So that kind of helped me out there. I was able to extend the battle and, and kind of work it a little bit. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot of strategy to two-handed. It's just beat the hell out of people. So, And the long hammer, I have it smithed up, but it's not like I have – I haven't really put any points into two-handed. I think I did one. So, I, and, you know, I got like, what, the 20% bonus or whatever it is. 
So I haven't put any uh, any points into that. But uh, I'm going to see. You know what? I guess I can go. I've never gone legendary on a thing either. So I'll, I will be getting there with enchanting. But once you do, do you lose the perk? i gotta, I got to look it up, see if you lose the perks and stuff. Because I've never actually done it, even though I had everything maxed out. I should have done just everything legendary on the other character and started over. That would have been pretty interesting. But um, that character is gone. I have deleted everything. So, Or is it? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's gone. I, plus, I, I don't know if I could go back. I don't know. I'll have to look and see. Maybe I'll go back and see if that character's there and go legendary on it if I have any time. All right. That's all I got. Um, Skyrimatic podcast at gmail.com for whatever you have. Audio, text, whatever. Not video. I don't, I'm not going to play video. Sorry. <laughs> I can play the audio from the video. No, whatever. Alrighty, I'm out. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, another episode. Uh, let's see, this week, uh, or week and a half, whatever it may have been, been uh, exploring the Markarth to uh, Falkreath kind of area, just uh, going around. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny how it worked out, but uh, so uh, Josh emailed, and um, he's been uh, he's been playing his mage character still, and he did a labyrinthia, obviously with the skeletal dragon, which is awesome. Uh, that that's got to be tough as a mage, and um, let's see. Oh, and he also started the lost for the ages, lost to the ages quest. Now, it's funny because I read this email, <laughs> and then I was playing right afterwards, and I'm walking down the road, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, the ground started shaking. I'm like, I thought I was getting attacked, you know? And I'm like, what the? And then it happened again. I'm like, is, this, is that a fucking earthquake? I'm like, <laughs> I've never, I don't remember any earthquake. And then I looked up and there was a Dwemer ruin, so I wandered in there. And it was uh, the beginning of the... <laughs> to the Aegis quest. So, coincidentally enough, I ended up starting that quest. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let me read his email real quick, uh, and I'll get into the part of Lost of the Ages I, I had started accidentally. I think I'd already read the book, but... <coughs> well, sorry about that. But I had uh, stumbled upon the ruin accidentally, <laughs> so... Uh, so Josh says, I was a slacker, and I and didn't email in time for last week's show. Queuing up the episode now, and I'm playing my mage character and had a hell of a time with Labyrinthian. What a fun dungeon. It's tough, though, especially for a pure mage. So I'm the Archmage now, and this highlights one of the things that I don't like about Skyrim very much. You can be the Archmage of the College, the most famous and feared assassin in the land, or fulfill the prophecy and stop Alduin from wrecking the world, and people still talk to you like a punk. And God, yes, I know. That is the weird thing. I need 10 lesser soul gems to replenish my stock. Go get them. And if I hear a wizard at Dragon Reach tell me to get the Bleak Falls Barrow, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> yeah, that never stops. Uh, yeah, that is the weird part of the game. I don't know. Maybe in uh, next generation consoles, there'll be enough memory to do more things like that, be more adaptable. I'm not sure what the issue is with that. But when you become the Archmage, people shouldn't treat you like you're some noob in the uh, college <laughs> you know or when you are thane of a town you shouldn't get arrested for all kinds of stupid things or when you're the freaking dragonborn you know it, yeah th those are the little things that are missing I i'm hoping next generation stuff that that stuff all gets cleared up but yeah i'm definitely with you there and at the end, he talks about how he he uh, started the Lost to the Ages quest, which is an awesome puzzle quest and uh, some good dungeon Dwemer uh, ruins and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I did uh, stumble upon that when I was just walking down the road. Um, I've done this quest before, but uh, it wasn't anything I was looking to do. I just kind of stumbled upon it, which, of course, is why I didn't finish the other things that I wanted to do. But, um, <laughs> so I was walking down the road, stumbled upon Arknagasm, 